Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, we're going to react to Is the SR-72 Blackbird already flying? The SR-71, I think it's still got the record as the fastest manned plane of all time, I think. It's just an absolutely insane plane. Incredible, like the look of it. You know, for something that was designed, I think, in the in the 60s or something like that, it genuinely looks like, even today, compared to the modern planes we have, it looks super futuristic. Like, which is just a complete testament to how good the, the, the designers did, like, the, how good of a job they did. Incredible plane. And they've been working on, the US military's been working on, I think, the SR-72 for a while now. We don't have much information, or at least I haven't heard much information about it. But I confess I've not been keeping close tabs on it. So when I saw this video, I thought, I have to watch this. Uh, you know, hopefully they've got, you know, they probably haven't got photos of it. I don't know, they might, but hopefully we get some juicy info. This video is sponsored by me. Check out my new channel, Aviation Station, right here. That's what it's going to look like. Traveling over heads at hypersonic speeds beyond Mach 7 lies beyond the Mach future 7. of spy plane technology. This plane can be anywhere in the world in one hour, enter wow. any country unnoticed, and be out before their jets can even get into the sky. This future plane doesn't need a pilot, flies twice as fast as the SR-71 Blackbird, and further Gross. development has rumored that it will have equipped hypersonic missiles. And wow. perhaps the most shocking thing about this top secret project is, it could be flying today. Wow. This is the son of the Blackbird, the mysterious SR-72. It kind of looks like the plane that Tom Cruise flew in the new um, Top, oh God, what was that movie? Top Gun, yeah. At the start of the film, like it looks like that plane a little bit. Spy planes have always filled an important role in intelligence that, gathering. Like big At the start, they were the only way to get a bird's eye view on what was going on over others' borders. And then even then, when satellites became more feasible and technologically advanced, they still had other advantages. They're fast, can be deployed much quicker than orbital cameras, and can avoid being shot down. The SR-71 Blackbird is commonly known as the most famous spy plane and during its operation, one of the fastest US aircraft in the Air Force. But with the retirement of this older spy plane in 1998, the USA government was left with a bit of a problem. There was now a gap in their ability to spy between spy satellites and Why did they retire the SR-71? Was it really expensive to run? It must have been. Like, I think the body was made of titanium, so probably quite expensive to replace parts and stuff like that. Slower remote drones. With other nations developing anti-satellite weapons and area denial technologies, as well as good old-fashioned fast jets to intercept normal planes, the USA needed a new spy plane. But this new plane would have to be fast. So fast that it would be able to enter protected airspace, observe and take photos, and perhaps even strike a target well before enemies could detect and intercept it. Something that is currently unavailable from fifth generation fighter jets or any known space programs. Enter the new version of the SR-71 called the Son of the Blackbird. This is what the top secret project is all about. Work on this project expensive. was announced to be started way back in 2007. Although likely engineers at the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works started research development many years earlier. Initial rumors were that they were working on a new aircraft that could fly up to Mach 6, or 4,000 miles per hour, or 6,400 kilometers per hour. That's Boy, crazy. that is fast. At an altitude... Yeah, because 4,000 miles, I think that's the distance between like London and New York. So that's doing London to New York in an hour. That's crazy, crazy. 
of 80,000 feet or 24,000 meters, triple the height of Mount Everest. This means this plane could reach anywhere in the world in only one hour. To achieve this insane speed, Lockheed is developing a special hybrid jet and rocket engine. In layman's terms, a typical military aircraft would use a turbojet engine to get an aircraft up to a speed of Mach 2.2. Higher than that speed, Off it's more effective to use a ramjet up to around about Mach 6. To get over the Mach 6 barrier, air quotes, this requires a new engine design called a scramjet. The challenge is, of course, to create an engine that can perform well at all three speeds. The SR-72 is believed to fix this by having both a turbine engine for low speeds and then converting into a scramjet for higher speeds. Both engines will have the same inlet and exhaust, but different airflows inside of the aircraft. Lockheed is working with Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop this engine called the turbine-based combine cycle propulsion system and has had millions of dollars in funding from NASA. But flying at this speed... I mean, it's probably more than a millions like in total funding. Like the military must have put in like tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions into it. ...comes with plenty of challenges. The aircraft would also need to be able to survive flying at such high speeds mm -hmm. with aerodynamic heating causing massive gains in surface temperature, yeah, hot enough melting. to melt conventional aircraft materials. Mm. Thus, this plane will need to be built from a special fabrication of metal and ceramic composites, much like those used in the space shuttle. But constructing this is also the other challenge. Much of this work will need to employ 3D printing, wow. allowing greater fabrication and technologies unrealizable before, even as soon as five years ago. One Crazy. such example of using this technology will be 3D printing the cooling system directly inside of the engine. Whilst this might all sound like science fiction, much of this research is actually based on the already flown hypersonic tech. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, if you saw this in the sky, I, if I did, I, I would think it was a UFO. It doesn't have any wings. Like, the only thing it has that looks sort of like conventional is the sort of pointed front. It looks like a spaceship. Vehicle 2, or HTV2, that was developed in 2010 for the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA. It managed to fly up to Mach 20 for 9 minutes, which is around 13,000 miles per hour. 20. Unfortunately, the drone actually lost control and the autopilot uh. activated its self-destruct protocol and dived directly into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But DARPA believes that they have enough research from this project to use it in the SR-72 program and has since cancelled a scheduled third test Mach 320 UAV. Of course, this future version of the SR-72 might not just be used for intelligence gathering and reconnaissance, but deploying weapons as well. Looking at the plane's specs, it might make sense that any design should be built with the ability to strike targets using special hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic aircraft coupled with hypersonic missiles could penetrate denied airspace and strike at nearly any location across a continent in less than an hour. Said Do you guys think that the days of the uh, you know fighter pilot are numbered? Personally, I do. I do. You know planes are just going to need to get faster and faster as air defense systems get better and better you need to use faster planes and there's a limit as to how much the human body can actually be put under in terms of g's like plus you know a pilot needs to sleep at some point they need to eat all of that stuff they probably can't sit down for, for, for that long there's probably a limit Whereas if you've got an unmanned aircraft like the SR-72 is going to be, it can stay in the air indefinitely as long as it's got enough fuel. And you've got AI systems now that are really, really good, you know, beating like the best chess players. I think there's one that, um, I think there's an actual AI system that 
took out like they, they used it in a dogfight simulator and i think it beat like a load of pilots uh, alpha oh god alpha fly or something like that yeah i think the days of the fighter pilot are numbered at lee land lockheed martin program manager speed is the next aviation advancement to counter emerging threats in the next several decades the technology would be a game changer in theater similar to how stealth is changing the battle space today of course many people are already starting to write in the comments that wow, there that. isn't such a weapon technology today the problem is is not only would you need to design a missile that could survive the air friction traveling at that speed but it would also need to be flexible enough to be used for example how would this missile turn whilst in flight its turning circle would be hundreds of miles wide and it would burn through plenty of fuel Thus, not only will the SR-72 require plenty of development, but its weapons will require all new technologies as also. well. But there are other advantages of this design that are actually removing many of the weaknesses of the SR-71. With modern technology, engineers can revisit the mission design of the Blackbird and remove some of the flaws that were put in place thanks to the 1970s technology. Like the space shuttle-like countdown for launch, or that the fact that the SR-71 took more than a week to turn around for a second flight. Yeah. And, as well as remove the need for pilots. Mm. The SR-72 will have the option of having pilots on board, but it will also be able to fly remotely. Without having any human meat sacks, the plane will be able to perform Go much, much greater acceleration mm -hmm. and tighter turns mm -hmm. with more G-forces, removing the last of the aircraft's great weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Overall, Lockheed is confident that this conceptual SR-72 hypersonic plane will be able to reach Mach 6, cost only $1 billion, and be flying wow. by 2025. Wow, but you might have... by next year. Holy smokes. I mean, I know that the title of the video is, is it, is it already flying? But by next year, officially, that would be super cool. If we could actually get some, like, you know, official footage from Lockheed, that would be super cool. Notice that throughout this video, I have said future or under development. But if this aircraft is following anything like the development of the original SR-71 development, then it's already flying today. Now, this is where things get a little bit fuzzy, and I hope that you understand that at this point in time, there's a lot of unknowns and of also a lot of conspiracy theories secret, to filter right? through. The original timeline for this project was that the construction would begin in 2018, and that the prototype would fly somewhere in 2025, and then enter active military service by 2030. But here's the funny thing. Generally, the US military is years ahead of what we know. We know that there are rumors of several other spy planes in active service of various prototyping stages, such as the Aurora or those mysterious <sighs> black triangles. And who's to say that the SR-72, or at least a flying prototype version, is not already in active service, or at least in the active prototype stages flying? I have to think that there is one already, because it looks so similar. If any of you guys have seen Top Gun Maverick, it looks so similar to the to the plane Tom Cruise flew. And Tom Cruise, you know, with Top Gun has all these links to the military. I'm sure they had conversations about the SR-72. Tom must have seen, you know, some blueprints and stuff. I, I'm, I'm sure it's, I reckon it's probably, they already have working prototypes. Somewhere among the desert sands of the US continent. The question is, do you really think that the US government would have left its spy plane defense or offensive role unfilled for the last 20 years after the retirement of the SR-71? Well, I'll let you decide down in the comments below. 
as for where we are today with the SR-72 progress, so far the US Air Force is still kind of deciding between the SR-72 and the Northrop RQ-180 drone, which has already flown and has greater stealth capabilities. Although it's not a hypersonic aircraft and thus built with conventional technologies that are far easier to realize. Lockheed has a way to go developing the prototype and its underlying technologies of the SR-72. Although in 2017, Executive Vice President Rob West commented that We've been saying hypersonics are two years away for the last 20 years. But all I can say is that the technology is mature and we, along with DARPA and the other services, are working hard to get that capability into the hands of our warfighters as soon as possible. It remains to be seen which project will be put into service or which will ever be publicly acknowledged. If you want to know more about the Blackbird SR-1 development... Man, I really, really want to see the SR-72 in action. I might actually re-watch Top Gun Maverick just because, you know, I th I've just Googled it. The plane was called the Dark Star. There are a, There's a ton of similarities in, in terms of the aesthetic and the speeds that the, the both planes, the SR-72 and the Dark Star, were capable of. So, yeah, I, I'm sure... I, I can't say I'm sure. I don't really have any insight into, you know, what's going on in the military. Like, who knows? But you'd have to think, you know, the, the narrator of the video made a good point. You know, the SR-71 was retired over 20 years ago. Like, to the US Air Force and, you know, its contractors have had all this time to develop the successor. Like, why are we really saying that they wouldn't have something like capable of doing what the SR-71 at least that's available now. Yeah, I'm inclined to think that the SR-72, you know, probably is out there in the skies already. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.